Hi everyone, it's time for another What's New Wednesday. I'm Ann behind the camera, and right here we have Julie Madlin. <laughs> so Julie, you were telling me that you had something happen to you recently. You had a visit from some very interesting people, and so that's going to be our focus for What's New Wednesday. Tell us more. So last week, uh, I had some visitors, two professors from SUNY Albany stopped by, um, and they wanted to look at the city's urban renewal records. Urban renewal. Ooh. Yes. So it was really exciting for me because I've been staring at these records for about 10 years, wow. hoping someone would use them. And um, they came in and were absolutely amazed at the records that we had. And they were. They said that they were in fantastic condition, and uh, especially the photographs. They mm. could not believe how great the photographs were. I bet people are a little surprised to learn that we even have records about urban renewal. Uh, yeah, I was actually really surprised too. Um, we've got three drawers of a file cabinet and some shelves on a bookcase full of things like uh, appraisals, maps, uh, photographs, all kinds of things. Wow. Yeah. So these folks who came to look at your treasure trove of urban renewal material, tell us a little bit about, you know, who they are and what they do. So they um, have a grant, a federal grant, and part of the grant is going to every single town, or as many as they can, in New York State that had urban renewal projects. Mm. And I went to a conference uh, last year and was talking to somebody who was um, part of this grant, and they didn't realize that Ogdensburg uh, was part of urban renewal. Hmm. And I said, oh, we, we have lots of records. And so that really piqued their interest. And we've been kind of emailing back and forth, and they decided to come up and uh, took a whole day and inventoried every single one of our records. Wow. Which we had never been able to do. So it was pretty awesome. And they did it in a whole day. They did it in a day, which is amazing. Wow. Which is amazing. So there are experts at, <laughs> at this, it sounds like. Yes, yes. And they shared all of their information with me. Um, and it was really amazing. I learned a lot about urban renewal across the state. Well, tell us some of the key things that you learned. Um, well, one of the things that we tend to focus on is how many buildings were destroyed. But the one thing we don't think about is how many people were displaced by that. Mm. Um, and I was actually really surprised when we went through the records how many houses were torn down. We always talk about downtown, downtown, yeah. downtown. Mm -hmm. And I was really surprised how many houses were torn down and how many apartments there were over those buildings downtown and how many people had to leave their homes because of that. Oh, Wow. Yeah. And, and it's the same everywhere where this happened. Everywhere across the straight state, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Well, not everything was torn down. In fact, the building that we're standing in right now yes. um, was spared. Yes. The old <laughs> Woolworth building is where we are now. Yes. yes. Can you tell us a little more about, you know, who got to stay and who fell under the wrecking ball? So I questioned the professors about it because I said, well, why would they leave buildings like the Woolworth building um, and, and the Sperling building and take all of the others? And it was a really simple answer. They said, well, they had to stop somewhere. Oh, wow. And I said, oh, yeah, I guess that does make sense, you mm -hmm. know. And so luckily some buildings were spared. Not hmm. very many, but some were spared. Wow. Yeah. So one... One block that was not spared and in which, um, or which received a new mall <laughs> was what? Okay, so the busy corner that everyone talks about, and you have to remember, I'm not old enough to remember um, the old downtown. I, I wish I could, so I have to use photographs and other people's memories really to, to remember this. But the, um, the busy corner uh, was not spared. And um, when the professors actually saw the mall, they said it's very typical of malls they, they have seen across the state. Although they, they were, um, they said it was one of the ugliest they had ever seen. <laughs> 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 Which I think we would all agree. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we, uh, we went out to lunch and they saw this map that Bonnie Pearson had done. And probably a lot of you have seen this map before, but if you go into Phillips, they've got a couple copies of it. We also have one here at the museum. And um, Bonnie um, 
from memory, my, is my understanding, actually did this map, which is amazing. That is and amazing. when they saw this, they, they couldn't believe it, and they wanted a copy of it. So I was able to, um, to get a copy for them. Um, and they just couldn't believe it. And they said, oh, this is really great. Now you can really see the, kind of the before and after. So show us where we are right now. So we are in the Woolworth building, which let's see if my eyes are working here. Um, oh gosh, I can't see it with my right here. There we go. Sorry. Bifocal's not working. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the Woolworth building. This is where we're located. And this survived. Mm -hmm. This whole block survived. As well as this block here at City Hall. And the the mall that was built in um what, the late sixties, early seventies? Yeah, probably seventies. Yeah. Okay. The lovely mall is here. Okay. Yeah. And what did it displace? It displaced, well, a lot of things, but O'Connor and Algies, which mm -hmm. a lot of people talk about. Um, that was kind of the gathering place for the for the men folk of Ogdensburg. You could go in, get a nice cigar, I think maybe have a sandwich. I think we got a picture of it right here on this map. Or you've got a better one. I Well, I have a photograph. Before they tore things down, they took photographs. And um, apparently the photographs that we have in Ogdensburg in our collection are are really good compared to what other towns and cities have. Hmm. So before the, uh, <laughs> before the busy corner was silenced, that's what it looked like yep. right there. Yep, that's what it looked like. And then Ooh. we also have this postcard of what it would have, showing a little bit more of... Um, Ford Street. Yes. So the this is the O'Connor and Algae mm -hmm. here. And that's Burling's right across the street. Mm-hmm. Wow. Amazing. Mm-hmm. So it, my husband's really sick of me talking about my urban renewal <laughs> um, day with the two professors. He's really sick of it. But it, it was very exciting to me to know that somebody uh, was going to be able to use these records. Um, and then... What I really always wanted to know is how many people were affected by this. Yes. And as we were looking through the records, one of the professors, Anne, said to me, Oh, Julie, I think this is what you're looking for. So we, ha they, we have these books with appraisals on one side of the paper, and on the other side are the people who were living in the apartments. Mm. And so that's something that I really want to dig into. And, and what we found as we were kind of looking through quickly is the people who were displaced were the elderly uh, people who were disabled and the poor. Oh. Um, and so by the time these appraisals were done in 1970 or so, a lot of people had already moved out. So if these people are still there, they're the people who couldn't move. Mm. Um, so I want to look at the latest census, U.S. Census, which is 1950, to see and, and compare how many people were living there in 1950. And that should give me a rough idea of how many people were displaced. Wow. Yeah. Did your professors have anything to say about other cities they'd been to? Like, how have those urban renewal malls fared? Uh, just like this one. Uh, urban renewal was not successful in any of the towns or the cities that they've been to. And what they see in our records is pretty much the same as what they're seeing in mm -hmm. other towns and cities. And they, they go all over the state, and this is what they do. So, What was the big idea behind urban renewal? Um, well, what, I was talking to the professors and they said a lot of people were really sick of looking at um, the old buildings, the Victorian buildings, and everything was going to be new and modern, and all of these businesses were going to relocate into these malls, and it was going to, you know, freshen up the downtowns of these cities. I see. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, um, if only the vision had, uh, you know, come, come true. true. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, and none of the plans actually ever ever came to fruition in these towns or cities. So I guess we're not alone is <laughs> it, a good way to look at it. Aww. Yeah. Well, yeah. is there any thought you'd like to leave our, our viewers with? Well, I'm excited to really do the more research um, about urban renewal, and I will keep everybody posted as I find out more information. Well, thank you. We look forward to hearing more about this exciting uh, path that you're about to embark on. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Oh, and don't forget, we have the Fenian Talk on Thursday at 6 p.m. This was a group of Irish people who wanted to um, force Britain to let go of Ireland, and it happened right here in the North Country. 
So we have a world-class speaker coming in, Phil Gursky. He's an expert on terrorism, and he's written like six books, mm -hmm. writing another book on the Fenian, so don't wow. miss it. Oh, that does sound yeah. amazing. It is free and open to the public, so oh, nice. please come. Okay, mark your calendars. All right, well, thanks for another um, fascinating What's New Wednesday, Julie. All right, see everybody later. Bye. Bye.